All right, welcome back in to another edition as Andy eats his salad here on a one-off Wednesday on the Six Rings Podcast for WEEI and for Odyssey Sports. That is Andy Jumbo Hart with some lettuce in his mouth. I am Mike Cadlick, and we're going to go and we're going to take another one of these one-off topics on this Wednesday live here across the WEEI socials on YouTube. And uh, we're going to use something that Gerard Mayo uh, some info Gerard gave us on Monday at his coach's breakfast uh, press conference where Mike Reese from ESPN asked him any changes that, you know, the team may see because when they were, uh, when things were going on with Bill Parcells, they changed uniforms and they, you know, kind of changed things up around the team. And Reese was curious if there was anything going on here. And basically what Mayo said was we're going to wear captain's patches on our uniforms. That's something that the NFL uh, implemented across the entire league in 2007. And the Patriots have not taken part in that. Um, we talked about it a little bit. I forget if we did. We I think we talked about it on here actually. Um, whether it's like a, uh, you know, a bigger than the team thing. You're not supposed to be bigger than the team, so you don't wear the patch. But really, you should wear the patch because you're a, uh, you know, you're supposed to be looked at as a leader. So we're going to get into all that today, and we're also going to discuss Andy who we think the Patriots captains will be in 2024 and who will don those patches because. Uh, last year, we had six captains, two of which are no longer on the team, four of which still remain. Uh, the two that are gone are obviously Mac Jones and Matthew Slater. And the four that remain are David Andrews, Hunter Henry, Dietrich Wise, and Juwan Bentley. So uh, before we get into who we think will actually be the captains, Andy, what do you make if we haven't already rehashed it on the pod? And I forget, but if we have, let's do it again. Uh, what do you make of the Patriots bringing back a captain's patch uh, or you know, actually starting with the captain's patch in 2024? Well, first I'll answer Pete, the animal Austin. Where's Fitzy? Who gives a crap? I don't. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's start with like a. a Fitzy will uh, be here eventually. We we had Fitzy <laughs> the last two days. Let's get some Andy right. in here. Too much Fitzy, boy. Do yeah. I know that world? Too much Fitzy. <laughs> Nights, weekends, post game shows, podcast. Too much Fitzy. <laughs> um, so let's start with like a general discussion, if it's okay. Yeah. Before of we course. delve into like guys and names and reasons and why and that whole thing. Um, I like that they're going patches. I think you should. Like the, when you were talking, I was thinking about um, Eric Cartman, my favorite character in the history of all characters on yep. his big wheel. You will respect my authority. Well, I don't know mm -hmm. if you have any authority. Are you a captain or you're not a captain kind of thing? Right. Like it'd be similar if cops didn't wear uniforms and badges and have marked cars. Like, is this dude behind me flashing his lights telling me to pull it's over? Like a citizen's arrest. Like, am yeah, I even like, like, supposed to listen to you right now? Yeah, right. exactly. So I like the idea. I also think they deserve, if you're, they have more responsibility. Like in most teams, there's, you know, captains, media captains, whatever. Like, what the hell does that say? Yeah, I think we're losing you a little bit on the connection. Me? Yeah, what the I think going so. On here? Can I don't you know, hear me? You're, yeah, you sound better now. Okay. That's weird. That's okay. Damn kids. My kids updated yeah. the laptop last night, the mother. I yeah, think they screwed some. The whole background here, you know. different. Um, but yeah, like if you expect them to do like take a position of more authority, they should get like some a positive with it, right? Like yep. show the world that these are our leaders. These are the and I'm a big believer just because you don't need a C on your chest to be a leader, but you've picked this group of six or eight guys, whatever it's gonna be. So let the world know. And the NFL believes in it. Because they not only have the captain's patches, right. they have the stars to let you know he's a multi -t like he's been a captain every year, one year, first year, second year. Um, so I like it. It doesn't mean I think Bill Belichick's an a-hole because he didn't want to put it there. I, I mean, I don't. Right. I'm not like piling on that. He had a belief in a certain way, and it's fine. Um, I don't. I wouldn't do it that way. I think we did talk about this, and I told you even in high schools, I don't think they put enough emphasis on captains and who the cat I like in my day I felt like the local newspaper there'd be like photo shoots and all the captains for the fall would be in like the the town newspaper like this is yeah. the football captains this is the base like you should do that they've earned it that's another question how do you get captaincy Let, let's let's rewind a little bit okay how do you become a captain is it team vote is it coach pick is it a blending of the two because I know question. around here I don't I believe I think they probably did farcical votes and Bill then put who he wanted as captains. So at least in my brief history of, you know, playing sports in high school and college, and I know it's different than the pros, but um, my thought was always 
exactly that. The team votes. The coach looks at it and decides if the votes are accurate or not for what he wants to do. Right. And so I'm sure that, for example, the Patriots last year, like I'm sure Mac Jones got a ton of votes if they voted because he is the quarterback. And because at the time he was a leader of the offense, then people felt really felt bad for him about what happened the year before. And they thought, well, let's stand behind this guy. Let's see what he can do. He's still a leader on the team. And then I'm sure Bill saw it and was like, well, I don't want to make Mac Jones a captain. But he also knows that, well, if 95% of the team voted for Mac Jones, then I have to do it. So, like, you put in Mac that way. Or, like, you know, a guy like Dietrich Wise. And I'm not saying he's not going to earn votes, but that's a guy who, like, I think Bill, regardless if he got the votes or not, would have made a captain. And so I think that's kind of how it goes um, basically everywhere. You know, you vote as a team. Maybe you pull the coaches as well. Um, And then, obviously, the um, the – the head coach has, you know, the, the authority on who to name it. And I'm looking at the chat too, Pete, Pete Austin, who is ripping up the chat. We appreciate it, Pete. Anyone else who has any comments, questions uh, about what's going on here, feel free to use the chat and we'll bring up your, uh, your things. He says, are they going to have A's and C's like in hockey with assistant captains, captains? No, they are not. Uh, that is not an NFL, uh, an NFL thing, but um, what they do do, which I find interesting and I was going to read off. And this is from Pat's pulpit um, burned from Pat's pulpit, who, Uh, runs the SB Nation blog over there. Basically, what they do is, you mentioned the stars, Andy. They have four stars underneath. And if you've been a captain for X amount of years, your star turns gold. And then if you exceed the four, then your entire thing turns gold. So like David Andrews, he'll have four gold stars and a golden C because he's an eight-year captain. Jawan Bentley will have four stars, but the C won't be white, or the C will be white because he's a four-year captain. Teacher Twice will have three, Hunter and will will have two. Again, if those four end up being voted captain again. So that's kind of how they do it. It's not necessarily an A or C. There's just captains, and uh, that's kind of how that is. But now, looping back to how they vote for captains, how do you think they should be voted for captains? Or how do you think they should vote for captains? I think the way you described it is actually okay. Like, I think it's a little bit like our um, government like the Senate, the Congress, they do their thing. And then the president can veto it or sign it into law kind of thing. Um, Because sometimes it is a popularity contest. And like, just because you're popular in the locker room doesn't necessarily mean you should be a candidate to be captain or be a leader of the team. Or, you know, players should, you know, could have off field issues and everybody may love, I'm going to use this example and I don't mean to throw mud on the guy. But like Deron Harmon was about as well respected as you could have. And then he had that little incident where he brought marijuana on vacation with him mm. or something, got caught at like a customs, whatever. Like right. if you have ongoing legal issues, I'm not sure you really want that guy to be a captain. Maybe you do. Maybe you say, no, 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 we're standing by our guy, whatever. But I just, right. sometimes I think there needs to be coaching level or even organizational level um, decisions. Like maybe this is not the year for that guy to be uh right. a captain for us what so, do you make go ahead no 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 Sorry, go ahead what, what do you got no i was just gonna say then it's sort of along the same topic what do you make of the quarterback then almost automatically being a captain and like the um i guess you, you know people look at quarterbacks who aren't captains and think you know whether they're a poor leader or whether they um basically they're not good enough because they're not a captain and like do you think rookies should be captains do you think you need to be a second year should they automatically like what do you make of that Okay, so there's a lot of layers to that, and I was yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I was like, first of all, there's like the position thing, like the quarterback's a captain, like just because. Mm-hmm. Well, why? If the quarterback's a dink and wasn't here for OTAs and like right. isn't seemingly fully invested in the team. I don't care if he's a, I don't want him a captain. But, that, um, but do you even want that as your quarterback then? Well, yeah, but maybe That's I'm stuck with him. I don't know. No, like, no, I no, I get that too. But I guess, and like, I guess what I'm saying is that should be not a prerequisite, but like if your quarterback's not a captain, then you should probably be looking for a different quarterback. I a hundred percent agree with that. Okay. Now, do you think that covers other positions? Like I think traditionally middle linebacker is a captain. Um, and would you say the same thing? Like if you don't have a, if he's not, if you have a middle linebacker, I think it's not a, a little captain, different. I think quarterback is different. Safety, because the your best is safety. Like, like, no, I think defense, I think it doesn't really matter on defense. Obviously you need defensive captain. Typical. But- Fing QB. I'm the former well, no, QB, but the, the quarterback, quarterback is like this, they're like the CEO of the entire team. It's head Get coach, quarterback, GM. Like it is. Am I wrong? Is that You're not wrong? But that? I don't. Yeah, I'm exactly. not going to accept it as like you don't want to accept it because it's from me. No, I think the middle linebacker also 
I needs guess. to be in that world and maybe the safety or or one of the two in my I, mind okay i agree with that someone down the middle of the defense that doesn't have their hand in the dirt right needs to be uh the guys that are making all that. the okay. calls that are sure. like i i think one of those and again if you don't have one that's probably saying you need to upgrade those positions if right. you're not like 100%. thinking they're captains uh um, yeah whoever calls your plays on defense i guess that's that's a good a good way to put it who who's the play caller yeah. is who everybody looks towards towards every play you would think should be you know uh, should have enough off field and even on field respect to be a captain of your team. Um, you know, rookies should not be captains, said uh, Pete Austin again. Um, I mostly agree with that. Um, I don't want to have rules, first of all. I don't know that there should be rules. Like, sure. if we're a young team in a transitional phase and I draft a quarterback number three overall mm -hmm. and on April 26th, he arrives in the building. Wow, this sounds all very specific. Um, he arrives yep. in the building, and immediately there's just an air about him and mm -hmm. the work ethic. Like, I wouldn't say, no, you can't be a captain. I would say... 100%, I agree. It, I expect you to be special, and by me making you a captain, yes, I'm putting a little more um, focus on you or more on your plate. I'm saying, no, I think we have our guy. Like, we're putting that on your plate right out the gates. Right. Now, I say right out the gates... You don't name the captain until August. We don't see the patch until uh, September. Right. But in that span, May, June, July, August, I May. have realized. I mean, Belichick. Starting in, what? Starting in May. huh? Yes. May be a captain. But like yeah. Belichick yeah. always goes back to among the rookies. Tom Brady was the leader. It wasn't even close. Like that year, right. rookie mini camp, everything. It was Brady's crew. Kevin O'Connell uh, at the NFC coaches breakfast spoke with Mike Reese saying uh, the same thing about Gerard Mayo. They were in the same rookie class with the Patriots. Right. And he was like, he was our leader. No doubt about it. Gerard was the leader of the rookies that camp. And so that's, it's interesting that you say that about Brady because he's the head coach here now. And Gerard Mayo was a second year captain. Devin right. McCourty was a second year captain. Like these were guys that I think it was quite obvious quite quickly mm -hmm. who they were what they were about in new England. Now those two guys, great leaders had to wait a year. Um, if they were quarterbacks, I don't know. I also think like the quarterback situation matters. Like who's ahead, like the weird one this year. And as we start to delve into options, Jacoby yep. Brissett is a weird one. Like he's the quarterback. Do you want to empower him by making him a captain and saying whether he starts or not, this dude is a leader among the offense. This dude is a leader in our locker room. Um, that's an interesting one. Okay, let me step back for a minute. Sure. So we've talked about kind of the idea. I kind of like these, by the way, these one-offs. Like, what's a good owner? What's a good captain? Good stuff. Like these, because these are topics that are, you're not going to necessarily get into on a weekly podcast, couple time a week, radio right. hit. Like, these are, like, different. Um yep. That's why so, we're here, Andy. That's why we have the Six Rings community to build stuff like this. Absolutely. And I if think if you have any one off Wednesday suggestions, tweet us at them. That's a good idea. We should, we should do requests. Yeah. Tweet for a specific us. episode, tweet them at yeah. us. Um, what is a captain? Like, what is a good captain? And I've always said, I have, like, there's a million, I think it's like porn, you know, when you see it, or like there's different, you know, there's yeah. a reason that there's a hundred flavors of ice cream kind of thing. But, I personally believe a captain has to be willing to be an a-hole sometimes. He has yes. to be willing to be authoritative, maybe at the cost of his friendship or like happy-go-lucky, getting along with the guys kind of nature. Like mm -hmm. I always go back to Willie McGinnis could scare the living crap out of anybody. Yeah, I think you need that. I think mm -hmm. a captain has to be a hardo to some degree. I don't think you can be the nicest guy on the, the roster. Um, which I mean, we may have some, like I would question Dietrich wise. I don't know what he is behind the scenes sure. on the outside. He kind of seems like he might be too nice to be a captain. Mm -hmm. Matthew Slater probably has a little, is he too nice to be a captain? Now he was a, unique but I think he garnered enough respect because he'd been around for so long. So whatever right. he says, you're going to listen. And he was so much older that I don't think he had a problem speaking up. And it's a little different. We talked about quarterback. I also think most teams I haven't really done a sampling survey. I think right. most teams that leader on special teams is a captain. Like he is the head of that kicking game, third fate, like Larry Izzo and those guys. Because yeah. sometimes 
they're almost borderline coaches. They they put together extra film sessions. They put together group whatever with that unit. So I feel like there sometimes. But I would start with that. Like, do you have to be a great player? Did you ask me that? I didn't, but do you? Do you have to be a um, starting caliber player? I don't think so. I really don't think so because I look at the Jacoby Brissett example and – yeah, he may start the season as a cat, or he may start the season as the starter. But like, is he really like the the best player on offense? He knows everybody on the offensive side of the ball knows the reason, including himself, knows the reason Jacoby Brissett is on the Patriots roster, and it's to help bring that rookie quarterback along. But if he acts as a leader and people look towards him, um, and he can you know, again garner that respect on the offensive side of the football then he deserves to be a captain, even if he's going to be a backup in three weeks' time, four weeks' time. Like, I I'm fine with that. And even if he's not starting, he can still be a leader on the offense because you're not necessarily expecting Drake May, Jaden Daniels to be that leader um, just yet on the on the unit. I kind of agree with DJ Daniel. Um, to okay. a captain in the NFL doesn't mean anything because there are way too many. There should be one for offense, one for defense, one for special teams, and that's it. And also, in the old days – captains were the voice on the field they were the only person that was allowed to talk right. to the official and accept a penalty and like they don't even do that anymore like they look to the sideline and the coach yeah. yells what he wants and even in like high school like the the captain is not the the voice of the team with the officiating crew. no all they do is do the uh, the coin toss really right right so I, I kind of agree with that on some level like there are kind of a lot of them but i think some of that is is based on the way coaches did it. A lot of them had, what do they call them? Like leadership councils. Yeah. And now those have sort of evolved into your captains because coaches right. were doing it. And I think people were like, well, if you're going to have a leadership council, let's make those your captains, call them captains. So I think there's a little bit of an evolution there. In some sports, no, not in the NFL. I know, yeah. Some teams still do the like weekly captains and you're a captain oh, yeah. for this game week. And yep. There can be varying reasons. It can be a practice squad call up. It can be they're playing your former team. It can be so, you know, there are different theories and ways that coaches. Yeah, remember go around. Jair Alexander did it this year for the Packers and he got like he wasn't supposed to be out there he or wasn't something. Supposed to be, yeah. yeah. He like went out there and then he screwed yeah. up the coin toss and the yeah. whole thing. Um, I do I prefer a group of captains, not week to week. I prefer like I agree. Name. You're four, you're six, however you, however many you want it to be. I was going to say, I think it's okay that there's more than one on each unit, though. Like, I think you sure. should look towards multiple people, especially if there's alignment, a skill position player, stuff like that. Yeah, like, don't tell me you know, only only one of Gerard Mayo and Devin McCourty can be a captain. Like, they're right. both captains. We both know yeah. they're captains, so make them. Now, the other question, and we're getting a good discussion on this. I kind of like this. Um, yeah. If you're a captain, are you a rollover captain? Like, no, ah, oh, man. Like, because in a way, like if you strip a captaincy, it's like what he did. But that's happened right? before here, hasn't it? Haven't they yeah. been stripped and then brought back? Like, wasn't, oh, yeah. didn't Jawan Bentley skip a year or something? Somebody did. It might've been Bentley. Or Wise. Absolutely. It might've been Wise. One so, of those guys. Like, and does that, see, this is where we get into the coaches part. Yeah. Because I think they jerk people around sometimes based on like, contracts or mm -hmm. like oh you don't want to re-sign with us you're not a captain i think they utilize some of those things in the well, past i have i have matthew judon on my list of maybes and i wonder if his contract situation goes into that at all right because he's i mean vocal he does a lot of the at least external jobs of a captain in terms of leadership talking to the media those types yep. of things like best player easily yeah Best player like on the team. He's yet to be one yet, though. Like, he wasn't last year. I didn't expect him to be in his first – this is his fourth year? His first, maybe even his second year. But he wasn't a captain in his third year either, which I thought was kind of interesting. Because he had a hold in or a hold out would be my yeah, guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think. So then let's get into it. Do you want to okay. get into who, who we think are going to be the captains this year? Wait, one more. Can I tell a quick story? Of course you can. To tell me I'm not qualified to do what we're about to do. Sure. Um, so a few years ago – I think it was 2021 if that marries up it might not i don't know yeah. um they announced captains and a landon roberts was one of them and i believe on twitter i may have like questioned it like oh that's interesting didn't expect landon roberts to be a captain or didn't mm -hmm. see him as a captain thought nothing of it 
in December when they clinched the playoffs or mm-hmm. the division or something, I'm in the locker room and he yells over, hey, hey, orange shirt. Hey, come here. You the one who said I shouldn't be a captain? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what? No. He's like, yeah, I think you put it on like any br- – I had no – you know me. There's no chance three months later or whatever. I'm you remember the tweet, yeah. That I tweeted who knows what. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, and this is why I don't think you're a captain. Because if you've been holding this in your head against some meaningless effing reporter for three months, like yeah. you should have bigger fish to fry. You're mm-hmm. a baby. You're oversensitive. Whether you run through an MFer's face or not, you are an overrated fullback. But Well, um, I was going to say at that time, too, like he, and now he's – Landon Gr- Roberts has grown into a much better football player um, with Miami and with Pittsburgh than he was here. He was more of a yeah. role player on defense. He yep. played some offense, like you said. So at that point, I feel like that was okay to question that. And, and again, I think we didn't that, know what was going on inside the locker room as far as leadership goes, but right. And I and I think that like trying to put myself back into my mental state of why I tweet, I think that was my mentality. Like, wow, this guy's like a borderline Star, player at right. linebacker, kind of. He's not, he's certainly not your entrenched middle linebacker, like we were talking about earlier. And oh, right. he's entrenched at middle linebacker, he's a starter. So I always, like he's not going to have a green dot because he's barely on the field. <laughs> right. So, so yeah. that was a weird one to me. And then I do think maybe he evolved into more of a vocal leader when they made him a captain and he brought a certain energy and yeah. the run through him mf and like style. Um, but I just, that was an example of one where I kind of, because usually these are kind of predictable. I feel like you yeah. can go 85, 90% if you try to predict captains year to year right. just based on who's on the roster, experience, past captains the whole thing so yep. yeah let's get into it so sure. my if we're gonna draft him my first pick would be david andrews yo i would agree 100 yeah, percent. let's like, go offense and de- let's go offense and defense we'll uh, i guess we'll draft and think about it each on each unit who should be the you know yeah. the top choice of captain so yeah i agree david andrews go ahead you're gonna so you can have eight right is that the limit i don't know i thought you did the research you were reading like 2007 and you had all the the patch things and no just i just i don't know how many you can have i just knew that this he's been a captain for eight seasons i i think i know there's a limit okay i'm like 99 like you couldn't put 53 captains out there yeah, like right. imagine 53 um, patches well I'm that honest. colts that colts uniform as you as you look it up that colts uniform uh their alternate one has the c for colts with the state of Indiana in it. Have you seen this before? No. And it looks like everybody's a captain because they you, they put like a patch on their chest. And it's like, it's just, I don't understand. Some of these new uniforms, the designers are don't know what the hell they're doing. But um, Oh, they're only allowed but, to have six. Oh, interesting. Okay. Although. Well, you're, and they maxed it out like last year. To be forced. Um, some claim that they don't really enforce it. Okay. Yeah, not strictly enforced. Four teams he named seven captains at the beginning of the year in 2019. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you're supposed to have six. Okay. Well, then let's do six. We'll go by the league rules and we'll figure out who what six we think should be the captains. Um, and See, number I, one is... A, well, should be an odd number. Because I think you should say most teams are going to have a special teams captain. So you should be then able to, if you want to, balance out offense and defense. So it should either be five, seven... Nine. But let's do we'll do three and three <laughs> offense defense and then a seventh for special teams oh dj daniel agrees with me first pick andrews yeah, okay he also says we are all captains i like that gen yeah. z would definitely do we're all captains i am gen z and we are all captains so let's do offense david andrews everybody gets a captain you're yeah a captain. just like the colts <laughs> eight-year captain leader on the team um I don't really think you need to like. We don't need to really sit here and make a case for David Andrews. I think that's automatic. Um, he's well. The flip side is true. If the captains come out and he's not one of them, I'm like, the hell's going on in this? Yeah, exactly. Here? So um, David Andrews, David Andrews. The other one who was a captain last year and remains on the offense is Hunter Henry. Now Hunter Henry returns to the team, takes a little bit of a, a pay cut. I think um, probably could have garnered some more on the open market, but he yep. returns. Is Hunter Henry going to be a captain next year? You think he continues to uh, to lead the offense? Yeah. If he wasn't already a captain, I think we could have a good discussion, but I think that puts him over the top. I mean, we're talking about an offense that lacks premier talent, premier mm-hmm. established guys. Um, David Andrews is an obvious one, and Hunter Henry as 
arguably your most consistent playmaker on offense for the last couple years. I think he's done a fine job. I don't know about you, just in terms of the media and the press conferences and yep. tone and different things. I, you know, he we're fortunate on WEEI. He's one of the generally the midday guests, and I think he sometimes does the Matthew Slater where respectfully answers tough questions, difficult, mm -hmm. and sometimes gives you insight into stuff's happening. And yes, yeah, right, not ideal, kind of like he's not just a. Um, everything is awesome mouthpiece of the team. So, yeah, I would say Hunter Henry, um, especially if we're going to include contracts, he came back on a team-friendly deal. So here's yeah. a little something for the effort. It's a C. It's not a exactly. C, no. It's just a C yeah. on your shirt. Yeah, right. So uh, that's two. Andrews and Henry, and we have room for one more, Andy, uh, if we're going to go by our parameters here. And the names I wrote down for the third spot were Kendrick Bourne, Ramondre Stevenson, and Jacoby Brissett. Um, and I don't know who will be picked. Obviously, we'll see what happens. But I know, and we talked about it before the show, uh, that Kendrick Bourne has been lobbying to become a, a, a captain of the Patriots. He told uh, the Boston Herald's Andrew Callahan in an interview a few weeks ago that he wants to be a captain of this team. That's one of the reasons he came back. He wants to be a part of this rebuild. Um, he also has all the wide receivers out in Oregon with him working out. Um, he, he was with, as, as you know, we saw on social media with Demario Douglas and uh, Tyquan Thornton and even Bailey Zappi were out in Portland with him getting some work done. So he's trying to build some camaraderie, at least in the wide receivers room. Um, but it's a lot easier said than done, right? If you're sitting here saying, I want to be a captain, I want to be a captain. At some point, it's also, well, you know, just put your head down, put your head down and work and earn it. And I'm not saying he's not, but, um, you know, I wonder where that goes. And then Stevenson's been around, could be going into a contract year. And then we talked about it already uh, with Jacoby Brissett as the, as the de facto starting quarterback right now. So uh, I had a rule in my coaching days, youth coaching days. If you, as a child, ask to play a position, it guaranteed you would not play that position yeah. that day. Mm -hmm. So uh, enacting that rule for Kendrick Bourne, if you're going to lobby to be a captain, you just guaranteed you're not a captain on my football team because I don't think captains lobby to be captains. I think that's some lame crap. Because um, sure. otherwise... I'd be considering him for captain. Um, I love the energy he brings. Yeah, I love the effort, the the work ethic, um, playmaking. I think is a legitimate part of it. Coming back probably sooner that rather than later from an injury. Like there's all aspects. Resigning, you know, maybe being their best receiver. There's plenty of reasons for me to include Kendrick Bourne on my potential list of captains. But he just asked to be a captain, so I crossed him off. Maybe next year. Yeah. See, I. I get the premise and it does feel like that little kid's thing. Like I want to play first base. I want to play first base. Well, have Can fun in left field kid. Can I pitch? Yeah. Can I right. Pitch? No, you yeah. can't pitch bitch. Right. And so, and I, I get it, that. but yeah, but at the same time, it's like, okay, he is coming back from an injury. He is working hard. He does, you know, he does have respect in the room. He's just a fun, really happy go lucky player. Um, and a guy who people look towards. So him saying, look, he was asked, he didn't come out and say it with Andrew. He asked, he was asked about his goals and he said, well, I'd like to be a captain of the team. And then ever since, since it started to gain some traction, he's been like, yeah, this is a goal of mine. And I think that's fine. You know, you put goals out there, you have goals. And I know you're not a fan of the, the promote on social media crowd, but so, uh, since you have Kendrick he's Bourne, shaking people down, he's trying to get people to buy his merch too. It's a shakedown of Patriot nation. <laughs> I hate it. We're going to get you a born blessed t-shirt and you're going to wear it on the and I like it. So, I like him I, a lot. That's what makes me it. like, oh, I love him. He's my favorite receiver. He's one of my okay. favorite players on the team. I love his smile. I love his energy. <laughs> I love the whole smile. Thing. I do. Okay. I right. love people that love football, but sure. stop shaking down Patriot Nation to buy your damn <laughs> merch and stop asking to be a captain. All right. So then he's not a captain in your book. Who is the third captain of the Patriots offense though? So Stevenson is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. He is in a contract year. They would like to re-sign him. Um, I don't know if that plays into it. Like, oh, we'll make you a captain, but you know, if you're going to, if we're going to commit to you in that way, we'd like right. a little something, something committed to us. I don't know. Um, another candidate I would throw out there is Mike on Wenu, who has resigned. Ooh, that's a good one. Yep. Who is a, I, I don't, we, we talked about this in free agency. I don't think there's a black mark against him. I don't think there's a reason right. he couldn't be. He works hard. He's versatile, plays different positions. He's resigned. He's good. I mean, their offensive line may be the foundation of their offense. If you know, cause people are like, Oh, you're going to have two captains on the offensive line. Well, if you looked at our skill players, we don't have a lot of candidates to choose from. Right. Um, and that's, it just is what it is. 
So I would I'm, I'm, so Brissett, I he's a quarterback. Yep. You might need some stability in that room. Um, although the QB one, according to videos on the internet, is Bailey Zappi. You didn't mention him. I was I've seen videos of people yelling QB one and he stands up. I'm sorry. Um so basically Stevenson, Brissett, and Onwenu might be okay. your offensive other cap. And there's no rule, by the way. It could just be Hunter Henry and David Andrews. Like you don't have right. to so I think so. Here's from, the one out or go ahead first. I was just gonna say from that group. I think I would vote for Onwenu. Okay. I'm gonna give my vote to Kendrick Bourne. Um, however, what I will what I will say too is something we touched on a little bit earlier, and that is if Drake May or Jaden Daniels comes in here the day they're drafted and works hard and wins the QB1 job and is in early and out late and immediately garners respect from his offensive teammates and is seen as a leader and a guy who isn't just in a backseat role. Um, and frankly, even if he's not QB1 week one, yeah, that probably wouldn't work. So I shouldn't say <laughs> it probably wouldn't work that way. You're not going to make him a captain and keep him on the bench. But So let's go with the original plan. If he does win the job and he does come in here and he kicks ass and he works hard and he goes out of the way in the preseason and is vocal leader and, he, he, you know, People respect him, and he's not an asshole. Hey, hey, Make, hey, hey. You said bitch earlier. Yeah, but that's a much worse word than bitch. Okay, a, a jerk? I don't know. What do you want from me? Anyway. I say bitch uh, on TV. I can't say that word. Yeah, I guess you're right. But we're on a podcast. So we're marked as explicit, so we're fine. Anyway, if he comes in here and he isn't a jerk, and he garners the respect and all that good stuff, then I'm completely okay with making your rookie quarterback a captain before. I don't love rookie quarterbacks as captains. To me, it would have to be truly special, truly, okay. truly special. Like I now, maybe CJ Stroud. Maybe they knew when he arrived in Houston, oh my God, this is him. This is the dude. Right. He would be an example because he transformed everything there. He was a transformational person, player, leader, the whole thing on and off the field. So I don't I don't love it, but I would leave the door open in the certain situation. And the more I think about it, what I'm going to ask of Brissett seemingly is not diff is not easy. It's going to be a difficult season for him potentially. Um, he may have to watch a rookie struggle from the get go and be like, "Why am I, aren't I going in? I can do less poorly than that." Or he may lose his job in week three, five, seven. Right. So there is a is that um, sort of like toss him a bone. We we appreciate you. We're making mm -hmm. you a team captain. Doesn't mean you're starting in week one. Doesn't mean you're starting in week five or eight. But we're telling you what level we put you on within this roster. Like, we yeah. put you on a certain pedestal. So, yeah. I, maybe I changed my vote from on Weno to Brissett. Maybe okay. I just voted Brissett. I think I just talked myself into Brissett being a captain. All right. Sounds good. So, my offensive captains then are David Andrews, Hunter Henry, and Kendrick Bourne. And Andy's are the two uh, Andrews and Henry, and he's going with Jacoby Brissett. And yep. uh, I can't say I disagree with, you know, making Brissett a captain. I just think that uh, I like where Kendrick Bourne's head is at this offseason. So let's move on to the defense, Andy, because the defense has currently Dietrich Wise Jr. and Juwan Bentley um, as captains. They haven't lost any, but those were the only two uh, defensive captains last season. In our exercise here, we're probably going to name a third and then go with one special team or so. Uh, Andy, I'll shoot to you first. Who earns, or actually, are you are you stripping the captaincy away from anyone? Who are your three defensive captains for the Patriots? So I know everybody thinks I'm an a hole and a hardo and all that. I am not stripping the captaincy of those two guys because I don't I agree. see a reason to strip it. If you give me a reason to, and I would, you know, it's only March. A reason could pop up, like maybe Dietrich Wise is not getting reps in camp and starts being an a hole. Okay, I'll strip you of your captaincy. If you want to be an a-hole and you like stuff could pop up between now and then, but the information I currently have, I would stick Lawrence with Guy had his captaincy stripped from him. Just thought of that. Yeah, because he was bitching about his contact contract. Right, right. He wasn't a captain this year. Yep. Right. Uh, but new regime. I don't know that the same old school. No, I know. I'm just saying we were trying to think of people earlier and yeah. that just popped up when we were talking about the defense. So so I'm gonna keep um Bentley and Wise. And that gives me one spot to add. I also liked Bentley going off on the uh, hip drop tackle yeah. rules and all that in recent uh, days. So he even went up a couple notches in my book. Um, and then my other captain, there's to me, there's 
trying to think. There's a couple candidates. Um, actually, there's more candidates than you would probably think. Like, I'll throw guys out there. I'm not. I just pick. thought of a fourth candidate that I had. So go ahead. So to me, Jelani Tavai is a is a yep. candidate captain. I don't think he would get if I only have three votes. I don't think he would get my three, but he he's a candidate to be a captain. Um, I think both safeties in terms of Kyle Duggar and Jabril Peppers, especially Duggar. You know, this is weird where we start to blend in contracts. If he signs a long-term contract extension, I yep. think he's going to be a captain. If he doesn't, if he plays out on the the tender, the tender. then I think Jabril Peppers will be a captain. I am going to pick – uh, also, after three and a half games, it's a little early, but if Christian Gonzalez is thought of internally the way he is thought of externally, he yeah. should be a, a candidate for captain. And I would I would roll Jonathan Jones in there just for who he's been for a long period of time. Was Stefan Gilmore ever a captain here? I don't think so. And I put sure. and I put guys like Kyle Duggar and Christian Gonzalez into that type of defensive back where they're silent assassins and they don't talk and they don't chit chat and they don't, you know, talk crap. And now that's on the field and that's sort of the bad side of it. But they also don't seem like guys who really speak up and turn in. Like, again, we don't really know what goes on behind. They're not a-holes. We talked right. about earlier. You, you got to be able to be an a-hole. And I wonder if Christian Gonzalez has that um, has that side of him, especially, again, as a second-year guy um, who's coming in having played just three and a half games. Yeah, and, and that'll be an evolution of – you're right, it's probably too soon because mm -hmm. I agree with you. I don't think he has that um, – necessarily that attitude, character, whatever. He may end up a captain because he's as good as people think he's going to be, and by year four right. you're like well, – He's the best cornerback in football. He's the best player on our defense. He's a captain, whatever. Um, so under the Duggar Peppers comparison for me, I mean, I guess there's others. You could probably talk yourself into Anthony Jennings and Josh Uche and Christian so, Barmore. Okay, well, you haven't mentioned someone yet. You haven't mentioned Matthew Judon. Um, yeah, I don't. At this point, I think that ship has sailed in a weird way. Okay. Um, Interesting. I think contract and age and hell, Gresham Fourier want to trade him and get something for him. And mm -hmm. like, I, I don't think he's an impossibility. We talked about it a little bit earlier. I do think he checks a lot of boxes for a captain, but it just feels like that ship has passed him by um, a little bit. And I just like Jabril Peppers. I'm just going to say it. I like Jabril yeah. Peppers. Okay. He's another guy that's been bitching about the, uh, the hip drop tackle and the wussification of football. And obviously with him, the way he plays, I mean, mm -hmm. he's a throwback. He's trying to knock people's heads off. But I think last year there were times, not only was he your best player at times on defense, he kind of called out the BS and the flack and like those various comments. Like he, it was. He always stuck was, up for Bill Belichick. Yeah. Like, I think he's a we guy. Mm -hmm. I think he just like, if you're in this uniform, yep, we're a brother. I'll fight to the finish for you, whether I necessarily agree with it or not. Like he's a, he's the kind of guy, not just because he's jacked, but I want to go to a bar with if there's going to be a right. fight or an alley with if they're like Vince Young could have used somebody like him watching his back the other night when he got knocked the F out on TMZ. Do you remember when he uh, was mic'd up against the Giants and he told Saquon, you're lucky we suck or you're lucky we ass or something? When he spoke about that in the locker room, it was the most I've ever seen someone be accountable for their actions like mm -hmm. ever. He spoke for like two and a half, three minutes. It was like, I apologize. There's no space for that. Um, even though it was a joke, I shouldn't have said it. I need to be smarter. There's these mic'd up things that, you know, that shouldn't have got out, but like, and he was, right. he's, and again, he didn't just duck it. He didn't just say, um, you know, it shouldn't have got out and blah, blah. Like he was accountable. He was sorry. He felt bad for his teammates. And because of that, he wasn't disciplined for it when some people thought he should have been because it was like, okay, you know what I did, I messed up. And, uh, and I thought that was, you know, that's a good display of someone being a leader as well. When you take accountability like that. Absolutely. It's, um, totally different world but the other night when the celtics blew the 30 point lead and jason tatum post game said we effed it up or we effed yeah, up right like to me when somebody says that we're kind of done here i can't like you know you right. effed up we saw right. you f up you're not making excuses so i have no further questions you effed up we move on like we put yeah, it in our seriously. back pocket and i think that's what leaders do like they take it on like i'm not going to make excuses i'm not going to cover it up i'm not going to I effed up. We effed up. Whatever the phrasing is, mm -hmm. and Peppers definitely has that. So Peppers would get my uh, third vote. Also, third. it balances out my captaincy of 
Dietrich wise, first level, second level is uh, Juan Bentley, third level is Peppers. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Jonathan Jones. Jonathan Jones is my third guy, and he's a guy who has been around for a, while, a long time here. He was undrafted. He worked his way up as a special teamer, has turned himself into, um, right now, their second best cornerback. He takes on the boundary side um, opposite Christian Gonzalez and opposite whoever it was last year, um, and he plays just fine. He plays well. Um, people respect him in the locker room. He speaks up. He talks. Um, and I think, again, I, I like the way that he's moved up um, in the organization in the depth chart. Um and again, turned himself into an everyday player. And I don't think he's quiet like most other cornerbacks are. He also doesn't talk a lot of shit like most other cornerbacks do. He's just sort of a good pro, just a good guy. And you still can't complain about that because you still use potty mouth words just like I did. Well, it's now two to one. You used a hole and other bad words. That's I fair. used TV allowed words. Um, and I also, I would add in for Jonathan Jones, which I have no problem with. I love where he came from um, to what he has become and what right. he is. Um, so I think there's a unique path there that can be valuable as he is leading young players and mentoring and doing those things. If you talk to Steve Belichick and some of those guys, they always list him as one of the most underrated players on the team in football, maybe. Um, so I think he has that aspect. And just to be honest with you, like we talked about on defense, I feel like there's at least a half dozen or more captain quality which by the way fits in with this is a defensive team who's the defense is its best unit the blah 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 right. like consistency stability that whole thing um dj daniel says i go judon peppers dugger um judon somebody else said judon 100 percent lock or something um we'll see i mean i certainly yeah. think he's in the mix i put him in the mix as well so that's our defense what were you going to say? Now, no, I was going to say now we have to do special teams where I think it's a little bit more like the offense because um, Matthew Slater was, you know, he was the Cal Ripken American League shortstop for 30 yep. years. Your special teams captain is Matthew Slater. I don't know. I mean, the obvious, the uh, the groomed person yep. is um, Schooler. Brandon Schooler, yep. Except there was a lot of like, what the hell is Schooler doing late last year with penalties yeah. and leadership? And remember he was like arguing back on the sideline a little bit after one of the penalties. Yeah. And remember when he handed he, Belichick the football in like week yeah. two? <laughs> he's come a long way since then. And, yeah, and I don't, I'm assuming it's good. Um, but he's definitely was a human penalty for the last month yeah. of the season. And so we row five Oh um, <laughs> says, Brendan Schooler. And mm -hmm. I think that is the fallback or that's like the obvious, but do you think that is, so now DJ, DJ Daniel says, I cannot stand school. Yeah. Right. And that is what I thought. I thought there would be a little pushback. Cardona. That's um, a good one. Is Didn't a long a tenured yeah. guy. Um, a guy I would just throw out there. I don't know if this kind of guy gets this kind of recognition. Marcus Jones seems like a pretty stand up dude to me. Your punt yeah. returner, whatever he's going to roles he's going to have. Um, trying to think of others, like Chris Board's gone. He's a, he was a core special teamer who was just right. not going to be around. Like, and Cody he Davis, probably, he's gone. Cody right? Davis is still on the team. Really? For now, yeah. He, uh, I would have cut him three years ago. Yeah. So I mean, uh, it's an interesting money. one, and, and I he makes you mad. No, he makes money. Oh, 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 yeah. It never no, felt like, so, oh, I need to have. Yeah, you know, I kind of, I guess you go with Schooler if you have to pick one. But I also like the idea of Joe Cardona, too, because he's been around forever. He's a leader. He's, uh, he's what about someone who rotating. Now, I don't even know if you're allowed. So we'll just bang out our six, three on offense, three on defense, and have like a rotating special teams captain who we send out week to week for the kickoff. He doesn't yeah, have but a then who's, who's the leader in the special teams room, like when it's all said and done? Um, I don't know right now. If it's schooler, then why don't you just give him the C? Because I'm not sure he's worthy. He certainly know Matthew Slater, and I no, may be holding that against Nobody's him. a Matthew Slater, and that's true. If if the person, let's just say he was replacing. Okay, I'll give it to schooler because let's just say he was replacing. Good one, Fitzy Cardona. I don't even know what that means. Um, not Fitzy. <laughs> neither of us are Fitzy. No. Um. If Chris Board had been the special teams captain last year, I think I'd be willing to make Brendan Schooler the special teams captain this year. 
So the fact that he doesn't measure up to maybe a Hall of Fame special teamer and Hall of Fame leader and Hall of Fame man and, and preacher and everything that was Matthew Slater isn't fair probably of a sure. comparison. So, yeah, I'll give it to Schooler. I don't right. love it, but I, I'll give it to him. I think so, too. I think that's it. And I think that's going to put a bow on our captain's podcast here on the six. Right Who's on the, the captain right. of WEEI.com and the Six Rings podcast? <laughs> oh, man. We all get the C, all three of us. No, you oh, guys all, have the C's. I'll look up to you for now. It's we're all I, C's. I'm, we're all yeah. C's in our own way. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right. However so that's you fill that word in is up to you. <laughs> so my captains: David Andrews, Hunter Henry, Kendrick Bourne, Teacher Twice, Jawan Bentley, and Jonathan Jones, with a little Brendan Schooler mixed in. And Andy goes with uh, Hunter Henry, David Andrews, Jacoby Brissett, Teacher Twice, Jawan Bentley, uh, Bill Peppers. And Brendan Schooler. So those yep. are our captains. We'll be back sooner rather than later here on the Six Rings Podcast. So make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to Six Rings Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are powered by FanDuel. Make every moment more at FanDuel. You can follow along on Twitter and Instagram at Six Rings Pod and follow him at Jumbo Heart and follow me at Mike Cadlick. We'll be back next week for a one-off Wednesday and plenty more here on Six Rings later in the week as well. And you're pointing to the chat. Drake May uh, over Born Blessed for captains. Yep. I'm leaving the Probably door not. open like we're row five zero for Drake May to be one of my captains. I am too. And uh, right now, actually, as we close out this podcast, you can head over and check out the LSU Pro Day. Jaden Daniels, a huge Patriots brass down in Baton Rouge. <laughs> Andy already all uh, already thinks that Jaden Daniels stinks. We are on Team Drake May here so far on the Six Rings Football Games podcast. That's going to do it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, and we will see you all next time.